Hey, Eric here from Games by Hyper. And today I want to take a look at a, um, like a props generator. And what I mean by that is, um, normally when you have large games, open world games or whatever, you most likely have all kinds of things laying around, some faces, some mugs, uh, you have tables, cabinets, you have barrels, crates, sacks of grain, whatever. So instead of placing everything manual, which can be a pain in the ass, because that would be like uh, drag and drop, uh, drag and drop, drag and drop, rotate it a bit, moving it around, uh, snapping it up on objects like this. So you get the idea. That's that's not doable if you want to have a lot of different environments, a lot of different rooms, things like that. So I made this uh, PCG spline. And when this spline is changed, it is generating. And here we have a data asset. And we can just switch this data asset to uh, any asset. Oh, bones. Nice. But by default, I have like some generic stuff. There are all kinds of variables exposed, like density, uh, 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 collision, offsets, things like that. Um, and offsets is more like if you want to have minus 50, plus 50. So now it just takes a random point within that specific radius on these axes, which is quite nice. Um, I also have a square. Um, there is some normal to density. So on this one, you see here this angle. And we can just change it up a bit to say I want to accept it on these specific angles. Oh, um, 0, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9. Nice. So you see um, the angle gets way more steep. Also, some barrel and crates. Uh, I love this one. Um, the most important one is this. Um, to set the extents to the right value so it can generate uh, its bounce more efficiently. And this one, when we drag and drop, it just generates new stuff. We can also place it up on uh, stones, rocks, things like that. And I want to do this for the table, but that one is broken right now. Um, uh, but the idea is on the table, I would just want to have like a scroll, a spoon, a bowl, something like that. But in the middle, an exclusion box. So we can place like a quest item, a book on it, things like that. Um, eventually also for cabinets and crates. However, these are just... Um, place with PCG, but sometimes you would like to uh, spawn props like this, like this massive uh, skill pile, which is awesome. But how do we make something like that? Well, um, for this, I made a physics-based spawner and I created a tool, scriptable tools. Uh, I created this physics-based spawner. Now we have all kinds of settings, but uh, we need to set uh, the game to simulate to make sure um, uh, we can run this tool. However, now you see the, we need to select this tool again, and now we can uh, make sure to tweak our settings. So let's just spawn some generic stuff, um, and it spawns from the mouse position. Um, so when I click, this one was just spawned. But we can say, okay, what is the spawn height? Oh, we spawn it from 200. Like this. Nice. But it spawns from this bounding box, so it takes a random point in that box. And that's perfect when we want to do like 20 items like this. Boom. <laughs> Which is really cool. Look at this. This is awesome, right? Let's make it even more. 40. Boom. <laughs> yeah, I love this. So if I this, we can make some really awesome stuff. The only problem is if we want to have this, then 
Uh, while we are simulating, we need to select these actors. Then we need to combine and merge them. Um, I think there's a merge actor still here, right there. Uh, just to store it, and then we can drag and drop it here in the world. Uh, via this method, I made this skill pile. Uh, this massive skill pile. But also some bones, things like that. So yeah, I really like that. Um, and the last but not least, and that is this one this tool is amazing uh, um, the problem with pcg is we need to uh, have the bounce of the mesh but we are not able to loop maybe we are but i don't know how uh, between the meshes like okay first this mesh what are the bounds okay get the next mesh what are the bounds place it precisely so it doesn't match the collision but with this spawner i'm able to match the collisions precisely so you can see it's perfectly lined up and I can actually stack things up like this, um, which is, in my opinion, really, really cool. Um, we can, we have some variables like, okay, what's the length? Well, this is the length. Uh, what is the amount to spawn? That is an override of the length or the length is the override of the amount. Doesn't really matter which one you want to do. And this one performs line trace checks like this. So that's quite an awesome result. Okay, that's about it. Hope you have a great day. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Congrats, you have reached the end of this video. And of course, uh, always feel free to reach out. For instance, in the comments below, via Discord or mail. And don't forget to check out our website and Discord. I'm happy to talk to you there. Have a nice day. Bye.